Happy Thumbs Gaming. We shall. Hey everybody, it's Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming. Today we have another LEGO Dimensions video for you. This one happens to be the Phantom Zone Free Play. And yes, we are going to grab all 10 mini kits and the minifig in peril. We're going to grab that Rule Breaker, which is 145k, or right around there. We think it's 145. It happens so fast, and you'll see when it comes through here. Uh, but we even went back and made note of that from the last one. Now, uh, Wave 1 and 2 character packs are going to be required in order to complete this fully. We do have quick links down below in the video description and each of the mini kits and even the minifig in peril actually have the ability or character required to get that so you can kind of make your little checklist and see who you got and who you don't got before you even start this now sometimes we post like pictures of the characters and things like that but we opted to just put them all in the description so that you guys can see what's required so all right here we are in the hub area here the hubba hubba and uh, we're going to go ahead and show you here. We're uh, level 9. We're, well, that's level 8. Here we go. Level 9, which happens to be the Phantom Zone. But we're continuing story because we hadn't quite played it on this playthrough yet. We're going to hop on through. Now, keep in mind, this video has been sped up a little bit. And the cutscenes have been removed, at least the uh, non-essential ones. But as soon as we start, we're actually going to go ahead and fire off a mini kit right off the bat. Go ahead and use your grapple hook to go ahead and rip open the back of that garbage truck, and it's going to drive off and leave behind a mini kit. So, woohoo! Go ahead and grab that. Now, all right, now the next one is uh, this is going to be a little confusing. This actually jumps to mini kit eight. Well, why is that? Well, there are five of these Ghostbusters signs throughout the level, and we're going to get all five of them, but because they're not all sequential in one specific area, we're going to go ahead and scan those out and not count it until we get all five so by the time we get all five that happens to be the eighth mini kit and as long as you follow along you're, you're you're gonna get all of them don't worry about that now if that's the only one you need feel free to use the quick links down below that actual mini kit has five different time links so you can actually jump to all five of those if that's what you're looking for so we got you covered we got you covered now uh, tons of studage and uh, lots of crazy driver going on here and uh, we're going to see the old Ecto-1 zap a ghost and drive off around the corner. And then it, uh, as we progress down the street, it cues this little cinematic that was kind of essential. And it drops a bunch of cars and creates this giant wall. And we can't get by. So we're going to have to solve a chroma pad puzzle. And it requires the usage of all sorts of things. We'll go ahead and start that off right now. Now, if you have a flying character, it certainly helps speed things up. If you don't, you're going to need to use Gandalf's magic right here, as I start to do. That pulls down the old ladder, and I fall a little bit short of actually finishing that because I went switch to a flying character because we can speed this process up a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to have to use the relic scan with Wild Style on the next one, and then use Batman and a grapple hook to get up top. So we just bypassed all that by flying up top, pushed it down, and we've got the first of three chroma pads. So we're going to go ahead and smash all the blocks right down below where we just were, and that's actually going to get us the uh, pieces we need to build up the old vehicle treadmill. We're going to hop in our vehicle of choice. Doesn't matter which one you use. We used our DeLorean. And it actually pulls up. Uh oh, look at that. It's a terminal. We're going to get to that in just a second. But first, we're going to use Wild Style. Any female character will do the trick to go ahead and spin to win across over the top. Make sure you spin around the backside, too, because there's a Poipole and some others. And uh, once you get all those, go ahead and use the Relic Scan to reveal a nice little jump handheld. And you can jump up and rip it down. And, uh, hey, there's a little reminder. You can use the quick links down below if you're just here for the collectibles. There is quite a bit of stuff going on here, but uh, you probably know what's going down by now. Uh, we're going to use Gandalf's magic, though, if you don't, and that's going to build us up the third chroma pad puzzle piece. And now we're going to use the locate keystone for, by activating it at the terminal there, and it's right over here by this purple goo. And look at this. It actually brings in a bunch of pieces. We shuffle them around, and actually we got to... We gotta use our uh, master builder to shuffle them around. I was having a hard time getting to Wildstock. Look at that! She's just spinning out over there. I'm not sure what she was doing, but uh, woohoo! And all right, we got all three of those moving around on the old toy pad, and and we build up this giant speaker. And mysteriously, it kind of wobbles its way into place. In fact, it it's like Gandalf. What are you doing? Get out of my way! Kind of pushes me aside. Oh, look at that, though. It gives us the old solution for the chroma pad puzzle. Now we're going to go ahead and activate the chroma pad puzzle, and uh, we're going to solve it. So, all right. Pretty simple stuff. Just make sure you get the right colors. In this particular case, you're going to have to mix yellow and blue to make green, but that's pretty simple. And it destroys most of the car wall here in a second as this scene progresses. 
And oons, 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 oons. boom, knocks it all over. Now we can get through and we can actually destroy the cars, whereas before we could not. And hey, look at that. We called on our good buddy Zane for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, he's going to help us smash the next Ghostbusters sign here. So if you use the quick link, welcome. And we're going to go ahead and do a couple butt slams. Not sure why he's got like this weird snowflake as he butt slams. That's kind of questionable. Must eat a lot of ice cream, perhaps. Anyways, make your way into the far right corner here and grab that Ghostbuster symbol. That's two of three. Oh, and you might have noticed that we have we actually freed up this little terminal here. Only characters with X-ray ability can use this. And as you can see, Zane uh, obviously has the ability. We're going to go ahead and kind of move our little camera around. It's just a little tiny soikle. And we're going to move it around and try to find all the pieces and make... All you're trying to do is complete the circuit, so... Look at that, no disassemble. Once you get them all, it actually makes the mini kit magically appear in the front. So we'll go ahead and smash the cars on our way over to grab it and booyaka shall. All right, thanks Zane for your time. We'll see you later, man. And all right, look at that, it's Scooby. Anybody that digs can do this next feat for us. We're gonna dig up these three pieces and uh, we're, then we're gonna switch over to somebody with some magic. So Gandalf will do the trick just fine. And we're going to levitate these pieces. And, oh, yeah, that's right. We got a wheel. We got an engine. It looks like a cover, maybe. And then also the roof. The roof. That's right. And uh, you thought I was going to break out into song there. Nope. It's going to drive away and leave behind a mini kit. So three officially in the bag. And as you can see there with our notice, there means we've got a little bit of a time before the next mini kit's popping up. So go ahead and use the quick links if you're in a hurry. If not, we're going to go ahead and switch on over to a vehicle with the old triple grapple. In this case, Homer's car will do the trick. Uh, the Batmobile, what is it, Build 2, I think should do the trick for you as well. And uh, for us, we're actually going to use a flying character. There's quite a few bluesies. And I think there's even a purple way up here somewhere. I don't remember. But uh, we do reach our maximum height limit there. It's like the FAA with quadcopters. And, uh, oh, yeah. Hey, I've mentioned that before. I've got a couple quadcopters. Do you guys have any interest in seeing any, like, aerial footage? And, like, what would you like to see? There's a lot of stuff that's illegal, and I certainly wouldn't condone any of that. But just curious if you guys have any uh, desire. You know, I might even open up a YouTube channel separate from this and uh, just do some quadcopter videos, flying around, checking stuff out, you know, chasing Reese around and stuff. All right, uh, I'm getting behind here. Mini Kit 8 Part 3 is actually over here in this left corner. You saw the Ecto-1 go screaming by off to our right. And back in this left corner, there's like this weird dock entrance. We're going to smash that Ghostbusters sign, and we're going to pull out Zane and get our Spin Jitsu on. So this is kind of weird. You're going to kind of have to push in the upper right-hand corner of your control pad. You'll just kind of move it around until you see the doors start to open and then continue to hold it there and watch those doors open all the way. Once inside, it doesn't matter which character you use, but make your way over to the right hand side of the newly found dock area and uh, we'll go ahead and hop on and we'll move these crates around to the appropriate color you can see they kind of got jumbled up so it's really simple for us you had to press circle which i guess would be b for the old xboxers out there and uh i was just spamming the button to pick it up as i hovered over and spammed and uh, when i got close to the right spot and it dropped it like it's hot look at that i also got a mini kit so We'll go ahead and derail from the old control panel there and sneak upstairs and grab some studs after grabbing that mini kit. So, all right, this next part's actually really, really cool. You know, we're playing the Ghostbusters level. And, you know, to be completely honest with you, as I use the relic scan on the left and then some magic on the back right, it's been a long time since I've seen Ghostbusters 2. So long that, in fact, I actually just ordered it on Amazon and I'll be watching it tomorrow. So, uh, actually, not tomorrow, the day. Well, no, not the day after tomorrow, dude, because that's Christmas. So I'll be watching it real soon. How about that? Make sure you use the grapple to pull out the old forklift. And when you do, that'll be the third piece, giving us the option to master build. Now, back to my story of Ghostbusters 2. And why am I talking about that? Well, once you complete this master build here, we find ourselves with this giant bell. And we're going to ring that bell. And then there's like this total, total Easter egg or homage or whatever you want to call it that's actually a reference to what I believe is Ghostbusters 2. If you guys know something I don't, maybe I'm totally noobing it up and wrong, um, then let me know. But I'm pretty sure we're about ready to witness is something pretty sweet so all right you'll notice too that i no destroyed this box on the bottom left hand corner and you also have to get that box on the wall so you might have to use the batarang or magic to go ahead and target it like you just saw me do build the pieces up into a jump ramp and go ahead and jump and ring that bell 
ring that bell. You knew the song was coming. You just didn't know which one it was. And look at this. This is what I was talking about. I am 99% sure that this is the Titanic submerging here from the Ghostbusters 2 scene when it pops up. Now, again, it's been a long time since I've seen it. So, uh, you know, in a couple days, I'll have more knowledge on this. But I am uh, just kind of guessing. I did a little wikipedia I won't lie. But, uh, yeah, so this should be good to Titanic. Before you roll out, make sure you use a flying character to get up on that upper balcony there and grab that poiple and a couple blues. Um, now, use somebody with a grapple to go ahead and rip down the old staircase once you have access. Go on inside. I know this is a long mini kit for those of you using the quick links, but this is all required in order to get this mini kit. So you're going to have to uh, summon, well, ring the bell and summon the Titanic. And once you get inside, you have to get up and around on the left hand side. And yes, we have freed up some studdage in the back, so feel free to grab those. But most importantly, you want to build up the pieces into a lever here. And then we're going to spin this lever around from the green side. I know we can only see the red but that lowers the chandelier now a flying character certainly helps here but is not required but as you can see it is time based so um, you might almost want to have somebody waiting there if you don't have a flying character I mean I don't know if you don't have a flying character and you're trying to get all 10 that's kind of a tough scenario there but uh, yeah Wonder Woman does the job just fine and uh, more kits will be out soon if they aren't already out depending on when you watch this video so should be plenty of flying characters Wicked Witch should probably do the job as well um, yeah. Anyhow. All right. Next, we're going to need the DeLorean. We're going to use this 88 mile an hour treadmill. Look at that. My vehicle spawned right in front. And we're going to take it back to, whoa, what's this? 1989, huh? I guess we're going forward as far as the movie go or the game goes, but in back in time as far as RL or real life goes. All right. Take Gandalf to the top of the stairs in the newer Titanic here. Or maybe we went backwards. Maybe I read that wrong. Who knows? Look, we are back in time. Maybe we were in 89. We went back. All right. It reveals a puzzle which shows blue in the top, purple on the left, and orange on the right. So we've got a double mixer going here. And I'm not talking about your parents' last Christmas holiday. We're talking about a double mixer on the Chroma Pad puzzle. Speaking of which, up on the high right, we used a relic scan to go ahead and reveal a nice little grapple. We pulled that down with Batman's grapple hook, which actually gave us the pieces to build the blue chroma pad piece. So one down, two more to go. So bottom left corner, we use another relic scan to reveal a b -b 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 better ring. So we're going to go ahead and blast that off. And look at that. It opens the door. Ooh, and a vortex opened and puked out a couple of pieces. Look at that. We'll build them up into the black and yellow chroma pad. That's the happy thumbs pad right there, ladies and gents. Look, it's black, yellow, and white representing. No, I'm just kidding. It has nothing to do with us. Coincidence. Although, who knows? Maybe it does have something to do with us. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and go up to the top left side. You might have noticed there were some shiny bits trying to make their way out of that box. We'll go ahead and destroy those and finish the checker pad board there, which allows us to press this nice big box full of something all the way down and whoops, swing and a miss. We'll go ahead and back up and get it again and oh, down she goes. And we find some pieces down here that'll build up into the red chroma pad puzzle piece. And now we've got them all. Now we just have to activate them via the terminal that's popping up going, hey, hey, look at me, look at me. And we go ahead and activate that and get our mix on now. So we got to figure out who's who. All right, we got Wild Style in the top centerpiece, so we're going to make her blue. She's going to be one of our main mixers here in a second. Then we're going to, Batman's on the left, so we're going to make him, oh, Psych. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yep, yep, that's how we did it. And then Wonder Woman was on the right. Now we're going to use the blue to max with the purple, and then the red and the yellow to mix with the orange. And that was weird. It showed yellow there, but hey, we'll take it. It solved it, and I'm completely honest with you, I tried to do this, and I tried to solve this uh, before this particular recording, and it wouldn't solve it. Like, the game wouldn't recognize the fact that I had purple and orange and blue, or blue, purple, and orange, however you want to look at it. But it, it wouldn't, so I had to start all over and do this again. So it actually took me two full runs, but... Anyhow, before you use the treadmill and go back in time, you're going to have to, uh, well, you're going to want to. See, well, back in the corner, you might have noticed there's some boxes. Destroy them boxes, and then you might notice that there's like this little seedling that's quite thirsty. So we're going to go ahead and try to fill it up. I promise you, I wasn't doing anything different. I was trying to aim, and for some reason, it would not grow. I could not fill the meter. It was a funny angle. So eventually we get it, and you can see I wasn't quite satisfied. Like, it didn't do anything special, but it did grow a little bit taller. And basically, once we travel back in time, it's going to bust open the wall, and it's going to free our minifig in peril, which happens to be Dana. Spoiler alert! I mean, you got to figure it was pretty uh, pretty obvious that it was going to be Dana. I mean, Ghostbusters, come on. Who's, who's the damsel in distress, huh? 
So yeah, look at that. I guess present time. Oh, I was reading that backwards. I was reading that backwards. So anyhow, we got it right now. We're back in 1912, it appears. And oh, and look at that. Look at. I don't know why she's wearing uh, something you'd expect her to see out in. Uh, oh, I guess that's the wear. Yeah, that's the outfit she was. That's right. I was thinking maybe a Flintstones outfit was <laughs> look like something she'd wear in Bedrock. You know what I'm saying? But all right, so we got everything we need in here. So you probably noticed there was a mini kit. Uh, you know, uh, click quick the click click the quick links. Boy, that's a tongue twister. Try saying that five times backwards fast, huh? I guess you don't have to say it backwards to make it hard, but backwards, man, backwards, man. All right, yeah, but anyways, there's quick links down below if you want to get to the next mini kit. Uh, and uh, if not, then we're just going to keep on keeping on. We got a couple of purples and bluesies back there, too, Z. We drop off, and oh, look at that. We're stuck. Oh, no. Actually, there are these two levers you might have noticed, or you might have already messed with them. Go ahead and jump up on both of them. You'll notice the red light change to an orange light, and eventually it'll switch to a green light, and the doors come swinging open, and look at that. We're right back where we started from, so... We're going to hop in the DeLorean and roll down a little bit, but you might have noticed there's this, this like, security guard sitting here, and he's got, like, this giant question mark, which is just, he's just begging to be mind-controlled. So we're going to use Wonder Woman because, yep, she's got the ability to control them minds. And um, then we're going to go ahead and sneak inside. Well, we got to make him flip the switch to open the door. Then we can sneak inside, use a grapple hook, and it rips down the old vending machine, providing us with the seventh mini kit. So, all right. And now at the end of the street, on the far right, now you may have remembered, on the far left side, right by where the dock was, there was one of these Ghostbusters signs. Now we're on the far right, go ahead and do the old butt slam and take that out for four of five. Now we've got a little bit of time before the next mini kit, so feel free to use one of our quick links down below. Haha, -ha. said that a lot cleaner, didn't I? And, uh, all right, the Ecto-1 and a giant possessed, uh, looks like Statue of Liberty. Oh, almost got stepped on. And we're back at him. Look at all them studs waiting to be picked up. Too bad I'm stuck. And eventually I think I hop out of this bad boy because I'm stuck again. E nope. I drive around. Get out of my way. Me, me. All right, here we go. We're off and running now. And, yep, we come to another pad. And eventually we get to this little uh, cutscene here where the flying cop comes in and shows us the Octon sign and this giant crane tower. Now it's important to note that the final... The fifth Ghostbuster sign that we need to destroy is actually in the far right corner over here. So we're going to drive over and hop out, and there's a lot of action going on. So don't forget to do this. Make sure you make your way all the way over. Give a nice little butt slam and booyaka shout. The eighth mini kit is officially ours because we've collected all five of those Ghostbuster signs. Now keep in mind, if you missed one, there is quick links to each of the five down below. Go ahead and quickly scroll through and find the one or ones you missed. And uh, you, know, you should be able to actually drive back and get them all. I thought about doing that in this video, but I know that sometimes you guys hate it when I get to like the end of the level and then I drive all the way back to the beginning to go <laughs> get stuff. Some of you appreciate it, some of you don't, so I mix it up. Next time I'll do it. How about that? And uh, all right, speaking of uh, doing it, we got all the way to the top and we kicked on the old keystone terminal, which happens to be the shift keystone. And uh, we probably, I guess it doesn't matter who you use. We're going to use the blue one first to flip the crane switch around. And then we're going to need Gandalf to get up top and go to the pink portal. So that's right, Gandalf. See ya. All right, up top, see. And we're going to spin this crank around. It's going to take us into a shortcut scene, which the majority of it has been removed. And we're going to find ourselves inside Ghostbusters HQ. All right, one of the last mini kits is actually down in the basement. So you're going to want to approach the master build symbol there. Go ahead and build it up into this. It's like a, I don't know, a laser cutting device. And we're going to go ahead and find our way all the way downstairs. Whoops, watch that last step. It's a doozy. All right, now that we're down in the basement, uh, we're going to find ourselves with this giant crack in the wall on the left side. Wonder Woman comes in handy yet again to go ahead and smash that. Now, a few of you guys have reported that using the, sh the scale keystone, which is available on the right-hand side right now, sometimes I guess it works. We tried it in our preliminary run, trying to find all the mini kits, and we couldn't get it to work. But, you know, if you don't have Wonder Woman or something, you know, and you need a bit, don't have a strong character, you might try doing the scale puzzle and see. And then feel free to comment down below and let us know if it works or not. So, all right. Now, there is only one mini kit left as far as the collectibles go. Um, and you feel free to use the quick link down below. 
And if not, we're going to go ahead and we have to solve this puzzle before we can get by the ghost. So first, we have to use the old scale puzzle to make... Well, we don't have to use it first, but I guess maybe we do. We're going to use it anyways. We're going to get all big. We're going to pick up this big transparent block, put it in place to complete the pathway to get to that switch. Then we're going to switch over to the old wild style, make her get oh so small. Oh so small. And that's right. We're going to get back to normal size, push the button. It goes beep boop beep boop boop. And then yet one of them doesn't flip on, but yet it works somehow. Boom. Gives us the solution to our chroma pad puzzle. And now we're going to switch over to the elemental keystone. And we're going to start off by using the earth element and blast away and fill the meter until this giant, I don't know what it is, some sort of weird plant grows up and lifts up the gate conveniently for us, allowing us to press this power core inside. And it opens it up. I guess it's some sort of a garbage can, really. Oh, you know what it is? I bet you it's one of the containment units that they catch the ghosts in, perhaps? I don't know. All right. Now we get over to the right-hand side to get to that blue chroma pad, and we see the librarian shush us. Don't be shushing us. Ain't nobody got time for that. Can't you see there's fires going here? Come on now. All right, we use the water element to go ahead and put those fires out. And then last but not least, we actually need to use Gandalf's magic right here to go ahead and lift this box up and shake out the old yellow bits that will complete the chroma pad piece right here. All right, good to go there. And last but not least... We have to solve the puzzle, so we'll go ahead and figure out who's who on our toy pad. And we moved Gandalf around there. You can see he wasn't in the right spot. So we got red on the top, which happens to be Gandalf. We're going to move uh, Wonder Woman over to the right-hand side because it needs to be blue. And then Batman's going to run over the yellow. Boo -doo 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 -doo. And we zap that pad and boo, you can shout. All the ghosts take off, and we can go up the stairs now. Now we're gonna switch over to Wonder Woman because she can fly, and if you do have a flying character, it actually allows you to bypass this whole room right here. So we're gonna do that. Sometimes we solve things, sometimes we don't, but we flew right up. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. All right, so now we're, uh, we skipped a cutscene and we're up against General Zod. And we're gonna uh, call on our good buddy Cyborg or anybody with a laser. Laser beam! That's what we need right now. We're gonna go ahead and zap that gold. I guess it's some sort of a window covering in the back. We'll blast it away and all of a sudden we can fly up in there. So again, you're gonna need a flying character to get up inside and we're gonna go see what's up in here, up in here. Oh, look at that, it's video game time. Who would have thought we'd play a video game whilst playing a video game? We are going to smash the place up because, you know what, we don't got to clean up. That's right, we don't got to stick around and clean. Oh, look, some bluesies. Look how easily I get distracted. I'm like all excited, smashing things, and then, ooh, piece of candy. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hop on the centerpiece here, which kicks on the old screen. Each time you jump on the red button, it fires a shot on screen. It's basically like Space Invaders or Brick or Breaker or whatever you want to call it. And obviously, you, there are three on each left, middle, and right. Use the blue and yellow arrows to get on either side. Once you destroy all of the bricks, boom, you win. And boo, you can shout. It destroys the TV, which, oh, hey, uh, you just got all 10 minute kits. Boom! There goes your TV. Wouldn't that? That'd be terrible. I'm sure your parents wouldn't. I know I wouldn't appreciate that, let alone. Yeah, anyways. All right. So, last but not least, we do have to take out General Zod to complete the level. Now, if you don't want to do that, just go ahead and save and quit. As long as you save and quit, it will account for all of the studs you get and the mini kits and the minifig in peril. And it'll even show you the cool little sequence where it builds up the mini kit. So if not, use Gandalf and his magic to target that little green circular spot three times until he crashes into the wall. Then use Wild Style and the old relic scan to reveal a grapple point. Rip it down and then we get a nice little cinematic scene where the boys talk to each other straight out of the movie here. And then lucky for us, they actually uh, contain the ghost for a minute, allowing us to take on General Zod 1v1. And... Uh, Basically, we just have to use the elemental keystone that he's going to reveal here in a second. He fires off a couple of like warning shots and sends after a couple of, sends a couple of bad cops after us and we rearrange their bricks and then before we know it, he's blowing up the ground. We have to move our character around on the toy pad a little bit and then he comes and attacks us. But you got to turn on that keystone first. Once you turn on that keystone, he'll fly over to the left-hand side. I'm pretty sure it's the left for everybody always, maybe not. Make sure you spin the old crank up, allowing the water to spew out, and then electrify him by making sure that your character 
um, is in the electric spot. Then he's going to fly over to the right-hand side, and it's going to repeat the process, but this time we're going to do it and get the fire on because fire and air make flame, so bigger flame, I guess. And he gets all disappointed in us, throws the big tank over, and says, hey, you can't get me. And last but not least, we switch to the Earth element, and the old big Venus flytrap comes in and put chewy chomp chomps him, ending the level, and all to the right. Phantom Zone free play! All ten mini kits in the mini vegan peril are now in our rear view mirror. And you can see here we got a ton of studage as well, including enough to get the rule breaker. So, oh, look at that. It's Dana. That's quite the hairdo she's got rocking there. And what do we got here? What do we got? All 10 mini kits are going to build up. Oh, it looks like it's a his and hers Ecto-1. And look at that. Lots of blue Zs for completing that. And all four gold bricks, as promised in the beginning of this. And that's it. So what are you waiting for? Don't you have other videos of ours to watch? I guess other videos, period. There's lots of YouTube's videos out there. Anyhow, this screen, you know what that means. That's going to wrap it up for LEGO Dimensions Level 9, the Phantom Zone Free Play. And, uh, hey, we hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it quite useful. If you guys have any suggestions or questions for us, head on over to Facebook, Twitter, or simply comment, vote, subscribe down below. That's right. Click that thumbs up. Help us get found on them searches. And uh, leave any comments behind for any suggestions you may have. Or maybe tag your friends. You know how that works. HappyThumbsGaming.com is available for your viewing pleasure as well. It's the home of our trophy achievement guides as well as our product and gaming reviews so check it check it out we're still looking for a reviewer and a writer or two so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in head to our website drop us a contact form entry and we'll get back to you as soon as we can as for me that's gonna do it for now as always until next time Rare, rare, see ya, see ya.